you know, today's readings call our attention to perhaps a perennial problem that we've always seen in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, and even in our times, and that's the idea of the failed shepherds. Those who've been called to lead and guide and feed God's flock, and for one reason or another, we fail to do so. And Christ appears in the Gospel as the one who sees his sheep, recognizes their hunger, their longing for, for order, for strength, for a leader, and he comes to feed them, as he does for every single one of us in our lives. I was really praying about what I wanted to talk about today, and there's one moment where a scene from, one of my favorite scenes came to my mind from a movie, and that moment I knew that everything was encapsulated in that one, one scene itself, and it's from American Sniper. It's Chris Kyle, well, yeah, it's, you guys thought it was gonna be Dumb and Dumber, no. Um, <laughs> American sniper, Chris Kyle was a Navy SEAL sniper in the Iraq war and he had, this movie is based on his life and his understanding of himself as a defender, as a protector, as a leader, someone meant to help others, his entire identity. And at one point at the beginning you see where that identity was first kind of revealed to him from his own father. At one point he's at school and his little brother is getting beat up by an older kid. And he goes over to the, to the bully and he lays him out until he's no longer a threat. And the father brings him home and is about to chastise them until he finds out what his motivation was. He wasn't trying to hurt somebody, he was trying to protect his little brother. And his father said to him, there are three types of people in this world, sheep, wolves, and sheep dogs. Now, some prefer people to believe that evil doesn't exist in the world. Those are the sheep. And then you've got predators who use violence to prey on the weak. Those are the wolves. And then there are those who have been blessed with the gift of aggression and the overpowering need to protect the flock. These are the men of the rare breed that live to confront the wolf. These are are the sheepdogs. And perhaps you could say this is an oversimplification, but I'd like to use it as a lens to discuss what I think is the growing, the biggest growing problem in our society, in our times, which is an almost synchronized effort to rid society of sheepdogs, to rid our society of shepherds. In our culture, there's only come to be sheep and wolves the good and the bad. And the sheepdogs are being treated like wolves. Why are those who have the ability to protect the aggression of the wolf, but the heart for the sheep and the willingness to fight for them, why are they being dismissed? Our culture is shaming every kind of strength in favor of weak, passive, emotional caregivers. You can't just be strong, competent man in our times. You're either kind and compassionate and you're good, or you're a heartless oppressor if you're strong. Strength is perceived as threat. And you know what the fascinating thing is? You know who predators go after? The men or women who want to take advantage of children, of teens. You know who they target, their prey always the weak ones, the ones who lack self-confidence, the ones who don't have boundaries, most of all the ones who don't have a father to protect them. They know it, they see it, and they go after it. And yet those are the kind of people that this society today seems very much encouraging. You just look at our narrative of our culture regarding the sheepdogs, the, a few shepherds of the world categories, you could say, whether it's law enforcement, priests, and fathers. Police in our times are presented as corrupt, as racist, and using their power for their own means. Priests are at worst pedophiles or homosexuals, or at best just old celibate men who couldn't get a date and are totally dis detached from the things of this world, irrelevant. And fathers, 
There's no demographic more under attack in our times, perhaps, than fatherhood. In TV shows and movies, they're portrayed as incompetent, as lazy, as mocked by their wives and their children, and treating like bumbling fools. Very gone are the days when father knew, knows best. And when we do see a strong example of a father, protective father, a present father, he's often portrayed as a tyrant, as overbearing, and in the end, self-serving. His strength isn't there to guide and protect and give himself for his sheep. It's there for his own good. You know, one man I knew, he said he was going to psychiatry. He wanted to give it a shot, see what it was like. And he said he had to stop going after almost like two months. Because he said the only thing that I kept coming back to was this psychiatrist trying to make him hate his father or see all the ways that his father failed him in his life. He's like, I'm sorry. No, I, I had a, actually a good father. I love my father. So maybe this isn't for me. And I've been through all of that stuff. It, they couldn't cure me in the end. Um, I've gone to counseling, psychiatry. And there is this natural flow of what did your father do wrong that made you who you are today? So why is there a trend in the West to shame the shepherds? Who's behind the eradication of the sheepdog, the shepherd? And don't you pretend for one second like you don't know exactly who is responsible for it. Women, obviously. <laughs> we needed some comedic relief. I'm like, I'm like Adam in his prime. You know, it's not my fault. It's the woman who you put here with me. Blame it on her. So... You know, I was thinking about this phenomenon, though. Uh, Jordan Peterson talked about this, and I really enjoy Jordan Peterson. And uh, he was saying how women, because of their maternal instinct, because of their natural uh, capacity to protect, they often do categorize society in uh, predator and prey, right? And women who grow up without a father, right? So if a woman grows up in her life who didn't have a father to protect them, or even worse, they encountered men who used their power and authority to hurt them, the only way that they see competence and strength is as oppressive or not useful because it wasn't there for me when I was a child. So you take that paradigm, perhaps, and you apply it to the largest generation right now of women who are growing up without fathers, without husbands and without children, it starts to create a social narrative of what male competence actually looks like. In that worldview, there are only innocent sheep and violent wolves. But I think it's deeper than that, though. I think it's the wolves who want to get rid of the sheepdogs because they're afraid. They're afraid of their strength. They're afraid of their teeth. They're afraid of their willingness to fight. They're afraid of the love that they have for their sheep and the willingness they have to fight and die for their sheep. G.K. Chesterton once said, you cannot love a thing without wanting to fight for it. To love a thing without wishing to fight for it is not love at all. It is lust because it is wholly self-indulgent and it invites no attack. There is no fruitfulness. There is no love without a willingness to fight for what you love. And the deepest sign of a shepherd can ever give to you is his willingness to fight and die for you. And that's what it means to be a man. At some point to become a man means that you found something or someone you love so much that you're willing to fight, to suffer, and die for it. And without that something, all of our life becomes self-serving or we become sheep, we become passive, then we become prey. But the problem of our times is that the wolves are cowards. They're afraid to fight the sheepdogs, so instead they try to shame them, to brainwash them, to tell the sheepdogs they're tyrannical, that they're fascists, that they're oppressing the sheep by keeping order. They convince the sheep that there are no wolves, 
There are no dangers. There is no evil. And the only good shepherds are the nice shepherds, the tolerant shepherds, the open-minded shepherds, the weak shepherds, the afraid to say anything that might hurt your feelings, shepherds. You know, as Jordan Peterson once said, I'll quote Jesus at some point, but right now, Jordan Peterson, <laughs> what he said, a harmless man is not a good man. A good man is a very, very dangerous man who has that under voluntary control. And unless you are a man who can be dangerous, then you cannot talk about humility and peace unless you are capable of the violence that is necessary at times to protect your sheep. Thank you. Jesus Christ was first defined as a lion before he laid down his life like a lamb for his sheep. And he is not a tame lion. He is not a domesticated lion. He is not a safe lion, but he is a good lion. And yet our current society has tried to almost also feminize Christ and his teachings. Mercy without justice. Love without the law. Grace without conversion. That's not Christ. And that is not the gospel that he came to teach us in our lives. Because a shepherd's job in the end is to keep order. And truth is what brings about order in society. There is a direct link between the teaching of the sheep and the feeding of the sheep. The shepherds of the old, they stopped teaching the commandments to the people for whatever reason, if they were afraid of what might happen, if they just didn't care about the life of the sheep, whatever reason, they stopped teaching the commandments over and over again, and that's when the people were lost. And yet, when Christ shows up on the scene, and his heart is moved with pity for his sheep, it says the first thing that he started to do was teach them many things. That's what a shepherd does. He teaches you the way of life to salvation, and it brings about order. But we have sacrificed in our times the proclamation of truth on the modern altar of emotionality. And when we follow our feelings instead of truth, that's when we are scattered. That's the Tower of Babel. Each goes his own way according to his own personal sentiments. Truth draws to unity. Feelings lead to dispersion. So if ever I have to say a truth that is hard to hear and might hurt feelings, I'm sorry, but it is far better than what we have seen in the last 50 or 60 years of the church when we stopped preaching the truth to protect people's feelings, and now we're scattered all over the world with 70% of Catholics not making it in their faith through college. And that's what the wolves fear. They fear the shepherds. They're afraid of our strength. They're afraid of our conviction. They're afraid of our love. They're afraid of our willingness to fight and die for those who have been entrusted to our care, for what we love. But as Christ himself taught us, there is no greater love in this world to lay down your life for your friends, for your sheep. All that is necessary is that we as shepherds are willing to stand up in our times and fight. <laughs>